We all have to be very wise and we have to open our eyes as we have come together to fellowship because the enemy is a trickster and he would always find ways of disrupting what God is doing. Hallelujah. Our key scripture that we've been using in the last couple of weeks or three weeks is uh, Acts chapter 2, 42 to 47. And I will read it again, uh, especially the 42. The Bible says that they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to fellowship, to the breaking of bread, and to prayer. Everyone was filled with awe at the many wonders and signs performed by the apostles. All the believers were together and had everything in common. They sold property and possessions to give to anyone who had need. Every day they continued to meet together in the temple. They broke bread in their homes and ate together with glad and sincere hearts. Praising God and enjoying the favor of all the people. And the Lord added to their number daily those who were being saved. As we come to church daily and as we do the things that we're doing, I know that God is going to add to our numbers according to the word of God. But the early church had to do certain things. They had to walk in a certain kind of way. I always say that most of the time we want to see what they saw. We want to experience uh, the anointing that was upon their lives, that they will walk, their shadows will heal the sick, uh, they will speak, and then signs, wonders, and miracles will follow them. We want that. And I, I know that we want that because um, there are sick amongst, the people that are sick amongst us, there are people that need these miracles. And these miracles would have to be done. However, we need to have people live the life that these early apostles and the early church lived so we can also experience what they experienced. Many times, we want to live our lives the way we want, but yet we want to see what they saw. That's impossible. Amen. Amen. So if we want to see what they saw, then we need to begin to do what they did. Today we don't have time for anything. These guys will stay and fast and pray. As I said last week, even when they needed to really have people share food, distribute food amongst them, they looked for people who were filled with the Holy Spirit. Today, we don't even want to be filled with the Holy Spirit. We want certain things, but we don't want to do what we ought to do so that we will begin to see what they saw. We've been looking at some of these things in the past weeks. And this morning, what I'm going to do is we're also going to look interestingly at... <laughs> some of the dangers that we see in the church, even as we desire to knit ourselves together closely to serve the Lord, to fellowship with one another. We, we have to be very careful because uh, hmm, these are very difficult things to say, but they are the reality. Christians don't want... Uh, pastors to talk about these things because we are being do you realize that the church is being judged always by unbelievers and we are being forced to live the life that the unbelievers want us to live the world is trying to push the church into a corner where we will begin to do what pleases them Regardless of what the Bible says. I don't know if you have paid attention. Because <laughs> how would the world begin to tell the church, even though the Bible says that 
marriage is between a man and a woman how would the world now push the church and force the church to accept that a man can marry a man and a woman can marry a woman we need to open our eyes because many things are happening and they are happening very quickly because I believe that maybe about 20 years ago, maybe 20 years is even too much, you would, this wouldn't have been a problem. The ch- I mean, a pastor wouldn't have even thought twice to answer that question. True or false? But today, even as I'm speaking, somebody can just pick you up and say that you are being whatever to some people. So if, I mean, please, the church is supposed to really follow the Bible. Is that not true? So if the church is supposed to follow the Bible, then it means that the church is expected to really train the people in the church to obey what God is saying. Hallelujah. You don't come to church with your own doctrine. You don't come to church with your own views that you have made, regardless of what the Bible is saying. Then start your own ministry and then preach what you have received from yourself. Preach it there. Don't come into a church that believes in the unadulterated word of God and teaches according to the Bible. Hallelujah. Unfortunately, that's what we're seeing today. And I want us to really understand that we will see it. It will come in diverse forms. People will come to church and will want the church to really sing to their, uh, their beats or tune or whatever. Not that they, want, they would really agree to what the Bible is teaching through the church. But they would want that the church accept what... Look, I want you to understand that this church will not do that. We will not do that. And we are bold to say it without fear or favor. Hallelujah. So we need to really be clear in our minds what the Bible says. And that is why as a church, I don't want you to be ignorant. I want you to read the Bible yourself. Look, there are a lot of things we do here. You think it's too difficult. You think it's too hard. It's too, but it's for your good. Under normal circumstances, today's Christian doesn't read the Bible. That's the truth. You can agree or disagree, but it's the truth. Today's Christian doesn't want to read. They are too busy that they have no time to read their Bible. Even though they know how to read and how to write. The only thing that will help you in this church is for, for you to be doing the devotion. And that is why as a church, we just give you the devotional material free of charge and also give you someone who will really help you, like a group leader who is going to really help you. And therefore, you ought to really speak to that person on a daily basis, share what you have learned so that what you have learned will help you during the day. Amen. And also, it will help you grow your faith if, if, look, there, there are people, had they not been devotion, there are certain books in the Bible they haven't heard of it before. Oh, yes, they haven't heard. Many people, some people, when you mention a certain book in the Bible, they will go to contents and begin to look for them. And they don't know whether it's Old Testament or New Testament. or They don't even have an idea where they can find it. Amen. <laughs> How would you feel 
if, for example, you know, we have, uh, how do you call it, uh, 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 people at the back doing projecting and things like that, putting the scriptures there. And you see a scripture, and the person sitting there says that it's not in the Bible. <laughs> Hallelujah. He has to go back to school. Amen. And, and it happens. Because they don't know what, where they can find it. And you are waiting for the scripture, and the scripture is not coming. And then somebody prompts them, and they say, no, 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 it's not in the Bible. He has to change that one. I should change and take what? Hallelujah. So we need to really pay attention. And this morning, I'm going to share uh, some very interesting things, but also very dangerous that we ought to pay attention, watch out, so that we will not be taken advantage of. Amen. Let's go to Matthew chapter 13, 24 to 30. Jesus told them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like a man who sowed good seed in his field. But while everyone was sleeping, his enemy came and sowed seeds among the wheat and went away. When the wheat sprouted and formed heads, then the wheat also appeared. The owner's servants came to him and said, Sir, didn't you sow good seed in your field? Where then did the wheat come from? An enemy did this, he replied. The servant asked him, do you want us to go and pull them up? No, he answered, because while you are pulling the weeds, you may uproot the wheat with them. Let both grow together until the harvest. At that time, I will tell the harvesters, first collect the weeds and tie them in bundles to be burned. Then gather the wheat and bring it into my barn. Amen. 36 to 43. So move to 36. Then he left the crowd and went into the house. And that's Jesus' style. He will teach uh, everyone and then the, uh, his inner uh, people, he will then uh, explain certain things to them. So his disciples came to him and said, explain to us the parable of the wheat in the field. He answered, the one who sowed the good seed is the son of man. The field is the world. And the good seed stands for the people of the kingdom. The weeds are the people of the evil one. And the enemy who sows them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the age. And the harvesters are angels. As the weeds are pulled up and burned in the fire, so it will be at the end of the age. The Son of Man will send out his angels, and they will weed out of his kingdom everything that causes sin, and all who do evil. They will throw them into the blazing furnace, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Then the righteous will shine like the sun in the kingdom of their father. Whoever has ears, let them hear. Amen. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, what Jesus was warning the church of is the fact that as we sit here, <laughs> we have all come to church. And the expectation is that we will all be children of God. But Bible says that there could be Satan's wheat amongst us. <laughs> I know this is something that you don't want to hear. I'm not saying you are the Satan's, uh, Satan's wheat. You, you are not the one. But at the same time, there are some amongst us. So who are they? Yeah, but why are you telling us this? Why don't you preach another message? <laughs> the, 
Jesus sat down with the twelve and they were eating. And he said, one of you will betray me. Those of you sitting by me, one will betray me. If Jesus preached that to his twelve, only twelve, I can say it to you. Hallelujah. If among the twelve there was one weed, then among the multitude there will be many weeds. So I want us to understand that I'm not saying anything different. I'm just trying to let you know what Jesus taught so that you open your eyes. Hmm. Listen. The church today is a blessed place to be. But it is also a place that you have to be very watchful. There are all kinds of things in church. All kinds of things. When Jesus went to the temple the first time, there was a demon there. And they asked Jesus, what are you coming to do with us here? Amen. But I thought he was in the temple. What is a demon looking for in the temple? Huh? The devil goes to church. Is he a chorister? Or an usher? <laughs> Hallelujah. Yeah, but you see that there's even one that is much more dangerous. Do you want to know? You want to know? If you read the book of Job, when God called his angels who appeared there, was he called? But he was there. Did he get an invitation letter? You think it's only your party that you have great crashes? Ah. <laughs> People crash in heaven as well. Hallelujah. God himself called his angels. But Satan was there. Look at your neighbor. Who invited you? Hallelujah. <laughs> Let me tell you, the truth is that this year we want to build not a, 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 like a block building. We want to build ourselves. We need to grow. And as we are doing that, as we are trying to build, listen carefully, Satan is also working hard to destroy so the effort you put in to build must be much more than, the, than Satan's strength to destroy. And that is why you have to understand these things. So you will open your eyes and you will not allow the devil to come in our midst and begin to destroy what God is building. Hallelujah. And I don't want anyone to be ignorant of this fact. I don't want anyone to be ignorant of this fact because if you don't pay attention, people will sit in church with all kinds of agenda to really manipulate people, destroy people, and also just bring people's faith down. They do it in diverse ways, and we ought to be very careful. Hallelujah. But the caution here is we have to really be careful as well. We don't exaggerate this. Because some people, when they hear things like this, they become suspicious of everyone. Yeah. And that's the other extreme. And I don't think that is what we are supposed to do. 
what we're supposed to do is to really avail ourselves to the Holy Spirit to guide us. Because if he is guiding us, we'll not make an error. We'll not make mistakes. But if we try to, hey, last time, that's what the pastor said. So, hey, me, I, no, you will make a lot of mistakes. Do it prayerfully. Pray that the Lord will lead you in everything we do. Amen. Because as a church, if God doesn't lead us, we will make a lot of errors and we will create a lot of confusion amongst ourselves. Hallelujah. But we need to really pay attention to certain things so that we don't mess up ourselves. Look, okay, so now we're going to begin to look at some of these dangers that we're talking about. And the one thing is false prophets and false teachers. False prophets and false teachers. Let's go to Matthew chapter 7, 15 to 20. Watch out for false prophets. They come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ferocious wolves. By their fruits, you will recognize them. Do people pick grapes from thorn bushes or figs from thistles? Likewise, every good, through every good tree bears good fruit, but a bad tree bears bad fruit. A good tree cannot bear bad fruit, and a bad tree cannot bear good fruit. Every tree that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. Thus, by their fruit, you will recognize them. Now, listen. People will go to church and they will say that they are prophets, they are evangelists, they are all kinds of people. And they go to churches looking for opportunities to really work in the church. And for, for example, we as a young church, uh, I mean, you, it's a church that we need a lot of people to work. What has saved us all this while is we have, by the grace of God, tried to really raise local people, people inside. But I will also tell you about the dangers of that because you will always still have people do certain, but I'll get there, I'll let you know. So we ought to be careful because people come, and we have faced that a lot. People have come here in the past and they had said they were, I mean, all kinds of people. But I thank God that most of them have been found out they themselves have confessed certain things. Unfortunately, the danger in the church is that people in the... And they begin to speak to people who they are. And the people don't know them. And they don't know the encounters the leadership have had with them. And then rather, instead, if you don't understand something, go to your leader. Because you've known him. And, and watch this. There is no pastor who is really, I mean, committed to God and committed to his church, who will bring the church down. Amen. So if, if someone is telling you something, he who came from outside, joined, came into the midst of the church, is trying to really tell you stuff that are going to contradict what your pastor is saying, go to your pastor and talk to him. If you don't do that, they, these people enter the church and they begin to really create confusion. Remember that Jesus said that they are planted there by Satan. So they come and some of them will prophesy right to you. Please, be careful if people come and they are, they are, they, they are self-styled. They, I mean, I don't even know what to use again. But they begin to go to people and they begin to talk to them, prophesy to them, do all kinds of things underground. They see everything. It is only them who God opened their eyes to see. And they keep telling you stuff. They keep, look, be careful. Be careful. Because if they want your good, what about your pastor who has lived with you for all these years? So he doesn't want your good. Then I don't know what pastor he is. 
Hallelujah. Jesus is saying that these people will come in amongst you. And if Jesus said so, it is true. If Jesus said it, I said it is true. And do we find them all over the world? Yes, indeed. They are everywhere. And therefore, we ought to ask, we are, look, the reason we bring in all this up is we're building ourselves. And we have to be careful that these people do not come in. Because we have experienced it before. And they had, I remember somebody telling me that, oh, somebody, somebody who has come, and actually he didn't tell me directly, but somebody who had come and he's, he's this, this in somewhere, somewhere, and he had come and he wants to help the church and we don't give him anything to do. And I said, do you know what he told me in my office? When he was confessing to me, were you there? You were not there. Hallelujah. And <laughs> look, let me tell you something. Interestingly, this person, and I'm giving you a specific example because I want you to understand what I'm talking about. This person was like, he, he said he's an apostle, actually. And because he didn't have anything to do, actually he was not even from here, so he didn't have anything to do. So he would go round talk he say he says during the day he does evangelism and he even started bringing people to the church he started bringing people to the church but nobody knew who he was and why he was even in 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 this place and nobody knew what he had told me and the help he needed and it is, it is I, I mean, it would be wrong for me to, he, he, he mentioned the name of the church and everything. Uh, he gave me pictures to see he ministering to a church and everything. It would be wrong for me to stand in front and say, this one is dead, A, B, and C. No, I can't do that. Amen. I can't say that. I can't really... When especially he has really spoken to me, and when he said that, he said, I've been in Kumasi for so long, and I've been in, but I couldn't, I couldn't tell people. I don't even know why I'm, at, I am telling you. That's what he told me. He said, I don't know why I'm telling you. And then he basically, but you know, I don't know. They, they, they then tend to really win the hearts of some people in the church. And that's exactly what happened. And these people in the church now were saying that, you see, this guy is an apostle, but since he came, we are not giving him anything to do. What do you want me to give to him to do? Amen. When he himself wants to be restored, he has to go through a process. But it wasn't too, 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 too long that people saw him making some curls and things like that and i mean going to some parties and there, and some people began to uh, the person all that i'm trying to say is that people will come they may be good people who are falling and they ended up maybe when satan really messed them up he picked them and threw them and they ended up falling here Amen. And we have to open our eyes and be careful how we deal with people like that. Amen. Because Jesus has cautioned us. So, I said, if you don't understand something, come to me. Even if you come, I believe that it is not everything I can tell you. But I'll give you enough to make you feel okay and just clear your doubts and your concerns. Beloved. <laughs> there are dangers in church that we all need to pay attention and watch. Hallelujah. False prophets 
and false teachers. Hallelujah. Matthew 24, 9 to 12. And this is still Jesus talking. He says, then you will be handed, he's talking about end times. And he's saying that, and we are in the end times. I believe everyone believes that. Then you will be handed over to be persecuted and put to death. And you will be hated by all nations because of me. At that time, many will turn away from the faith and will betray and hate each other. And many false prophets will appear and deceive many people. Because of the increase of wickedness, the love of most will grow cold. Hallelujah. Listen, what they are going to do, they are wicked people. What they will do in the church will make the church grow, the hearts of the people grow cold. Why am I saying that? They will bring you to a point where now it's going to be hard for you to believe even your own pastor. Because you think all pastors are weird and thieves and whatever. Because somebody took advantage of you in that same church. The person came to the church. The person was in the church. The person began, and sometimes they are even preaching to you. But they are not who they are. And the pastor may not have probably, uh, I mean, descended it and had really accepted them in. And they now begin. Look, <laughs> I'll share this with you. Only last year, last year, 2021, or early this year, which one? Okay. Okay. <laughs> Someone told us a story. He has a church. But because he has another church, there, he employed another pastor to take care of the other church. And <laughs> unknowing to him, that pastor began to really mess up the church and the church people. And he didn't know. And was trying hard to completely destroy the church and destroy the people. When he found out and he began talking to him, even wanting to send him away peacefully by compensating, now you understand. <laughs> compensating him. Uh, it's the beginning of this year. The next minute, when he, before he could open his eyes, the guy had packed his things and gone. Didn't even wait to be compensated. Didn't wait to be. He was, he's part. Is that the pastor? I mean, the truth of the matter is that he thought this is a young, energetic person who is eager to do the Lord's work. And he, this person had spoken very well about this pastor to us. But not knowing there was so much that was going on, that he didn't even know. Beloved in the Lord, <laughs> when this happens, do you know what goes on in the church? Now people, they grow cold. Their love grow cold. And if you are not careful, they leave church. Because of what someone has done to them. Because of what a teacher prophet had done to them. A pastor evangelist had done to them. An apostle had done to them. I want you to really understand that we all should open our eyes. We probably, and it could happen to us. It could happen to us. Where we will have maybe somebody amongst us. And even today, some guest pastors that you would probably invite to your church. When they finish preaching, they begin to take telephone numbers and uh, addresses and begin, as they leave, they begin to now influence your members. We have to. Amen. Amen. Because if you don't shine your eyes and if you are not careful, there would be come. And it is, the, it is Satan's strategy to bring division and confusion in the church. When, look, 
Satan, <laughs> Satan thrives in places where there is confusion and division. That is where he really, really enjoys living. If there is order, he can live. If there is order, now let me give you a typical example. If there is order in this church, and you know that if you sing, if you have an issue, you have to go to the, your leader, and then your leader will have to probably see the pastor or whatever. It will be very difficult for Satan to really use somebody who is singing to undermine the leader. Because he can't bypass the leader and do anything. So that order is there. And because that order is there, that Satan finds it difficult to operate. But if there is no order and anybody can talk to anybody anyhow, what happens is that he will just bypass and then go and create a problem. So unfortunately, you don't know what's going on. You hear it and you also begin to react to it without even investigating it. And then there will be confusion. And then he will really celebrate. But we don't have to give him victories so he can celebrate. We have to be careful. Hallelujah. And Jesus is warning us that in the last days, they will be around. False prophets will not really sit on the street. They will be in church. They are going to be in church. But Bible is saying that they are false. How can you discern the false from the good? False teachers will be there. How can you discern? And Bible says that you will know them by their fruit. Hallelujah. They will prophesy to you nicely. Oh my goodness. <laughs> and then they will tell the the, the worship leader who is a girl that they, they, they want to have an affair. Immediately, you need to understand, and the wife is there. Immediately, you need to understand this is enough of God. Because if he's of God, he will bear the fruit of the Spirit. You know, the, listen, listen. Church members themselves have made this difficult for pastors. So, uh, yeah, but you see, this guy is doing very well. And then, uh, even only one thing that he did. Let me ask you a question. Are you ready to answer me? Re you sure? Okay. <laughs> Why are you laughing? My questions are what? They are just simple questions. Okay. <laughs> you said it's only one, eh? Okay, only one. Don't worry. What about if you plant a mango in your house and the next time you go, you see a pear on it? What will you do? What will you do? Will you say that because it just gave only one pair, it's okay? Mango, bearing pear. And because it's only one, it's fine. You will call your pastor to come and deliver the tree. Would you do that? Why is it that that one, you say that one is okay? How can a mango bear pear? <laughs> Maybe you need glasses. Hallelujah. So you need to be careful and stop saying that uh, where there are one pair, and there are one No, look, listen to me. I am not saying that let's judge people and throw them away, but let them go through a process, a proper process. If we don't do that, they will do it to another person and then to another person. Maybe this one we saw. What about, what has he done that we don't know? How many, how many pairs have he been bearing that we haven't seen, but the devil had come to really harvest? 
Hallelujah. We have to be very careful. Because if we are not careful, the enemy is consistently, and the Bible says that in the end times, he will do that. Jesus, you know, take Jesus' word serious. Because it will happen. Years after Jesus was gone, let's go to 2 Peter chapter 2. 1 to 3. Years after Jesus had died and is gone, Peter wrote this. He said, but there were also false prophets among the people, just as there will be false teachers among you. Hmm. Jesus said it. Now he's gone. He warned us that these people will come. Now Peter is saying that they are now inside. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> They will secretly introduce destructive heresies, even denying the sovereign Lord who bought them, bringing swift destruction on themselves. Many will follow their depraved conduct and will bring the way of truth into disrepute. In their greed, these teachers will exploit you with fabricated stories. Listen, <laughs> beloved, be careful. And I'm not saying that because maybe me, I'm reading, I'm reading all the time. Everybody should read. No, that's not what I'm saying. But when pastors begin to tell you story after story without going, somebody can preach from beginning to end. It will be one story after the other, after one story after the other. No scripture. I'm not saying they are all bad. But if it's, that is his only style, watch out. Because he says that in their greed, these teachers will exploit you with fabricated stories. He will tell you stories. Never quote a scripture so that you go and church. Uh, go and check. They will tell you. So, in fact, you hear it, but you have. Hey. Minko. <laughs> People say things and they have no scripture to back it. I had one be yesterday, but I can't share it here. I can't share. I wish I could share, but I can't. Because somebody said it. So I, I, I don't want to be a speculator. I have to be careful what I say to you. Amen. Amen. You know, Jesus will say some things to his people, but not to everyone. So some people, maybe I can, you know, but not everyone. Amen. Okay. <laughs> so in their greed, these teachers will exploit you with fabricated stories. Their condemnation has long been hanging over them, and their destruction has not been sleeping. Please. Let me tell you this. Jesus does not say things for saying sake. Listen to me once more. I said Jesus does not say things for saying sake. If Jesus said that people will do miracles, they will heal the sick, they will prophesy, they will do all kinds of things, they will stand before him in the last day, on the last day, and he will tell them that I never knew you. Know that they are saying things today. Jesus has not sent them. So you have to be careful <laughs> what creeps in into the church. I have to be extremely careful I don't entertain everything here. Beloved, <laughs> sometimes eh, we love you so much Pastors, some of us, we love you so much, we don't want to corrupt you. So, please, bear with us. Bear with us. And people will say, yeah, but everybody, you see, this time everybody's inviting this one, why don't you? Please, oh. See, we can cry, cry. <laughs> Just take this one. Because you yourself... You know, there, 
when, when you have a plant, eh, you take your time to t- tender the plant. Let, let, I mean, help it to grow. Or when you have a dog, you don't go and take a bone for a 12-year-old dog and give it to a one-year-old dog. You break his jaw. Oh, you don't understand that one. Okay. You know, there are, some, there are kids here, like we have um, one-year-olds and things like that. You not go and make hot cocoa and a bank white and give it to... No, you kill that child. Hey, some preaching is hot cocoa and a bank white. And we have to be careful who we feed that to. You are too young to eat that. I said, you are too young to eat that. It's not every food you can eat. Please. Take your time. When it is time to eat that, you have it. Amen. But if it is kokote and a bank point that will really make you run, and if you are not careful, end up in the hospital, we won't even give it to you at all. You can grow to be 100 years. You still not, we will not give it to you. Amen. Many, no, listen, many of us in church today, we are eager to hear certain things. We are not really ready for basic scriptures, things. In, we can't even quote one scripture, yet we won't. <laughs> Please take your time and follow the process little by little. Begin to read your Bible, do your devotion, some few verses, you will grow. As you are growing, you will now be able to handle certain things. Amen. If you get it today, you may not survive for tomorrow. You may die today. So we need to be careful because Jesus has warned us that they will be around. Amen. Let's hear what Paul also said. 2 Corinthians chapter 11, 12 to 15. And I will keep on doing what I am doing in order to cut the ground from under those who want an opportunity to be considered equal with us in the things they boast about. Paul was really talking about some people who were really, and it, it's good. I mean, I don't have the time to go through the whole thing. That is why I picked from here. But you can read the whole of chapter 11. You, you see what he was talking about. Now, there are people that really come and sow seeds of confusion. And they want, you know, all that they want is that they want to really be seen as somebody's. And, you know, Paul was just down to earth. He was very simple. And, you know, because he was not boasting like, you see, some, some of us, we we very simple. We, I mean, we take, we, we just try to live life the easy way, the simple way and everything. And because of that, even your own congregation members, they don't respect you. They think that, oh, I mean, also for men, oh, bad, sorry, I know she t-shirt. Quote, a preachy. Hallelujah. But, but some of us, so we begin to, I mean, look down on, on, on our own people. And we begin to lift. So somebody comes and everybody wants, hey, I mean, please be careful. For such people are false apostles, deceitful workers, masquerading as apostles of Christ. Hallelujah. So we need masquerade. You, you know it. Or you don't go to Takrade. They just put marks. So you see a human being with a camouflage dress. I mean like a very fanciful dress. But the face is not. Some people are parrots. Others are goats and sheep. Others are even looking like Satan himself. <laughs> Hallelujah. They put on a mask. So this, there are people that are inside. We, and I don't want you to really forget about what I'm talking about. I'm talking about fellowshipping. Being devoted to fellowshipping. That's what I'm talking about. I want you to bring your attention to it. But I also want you to really know that you will have, as you are 
being devoted to the fellowship of the believers, you're going to see these things in that fellowship, in that group, in that meeting, in that church. And you have to be careful. Hallelujah. And he goes on to say, that, and no wonder for Satan himself masquerades as an angel of light. He will prophesy. He will heal the sick. But be careful. Be careful. You see, I tell people that, look, palm readers are demonic. Yet they look at your palm and tell you stuff that are so true. Amen. You remember one followed an apostle. He said, hey, when he rebuked, now it got, because if it is from God, how can you rebuke and then now suddenly that gift, so-called gift, vanishes? Hallelujah. Hmm. So he goes on to say that Paul says that it is not surprising then if his servants also masquerade as servants of righteousness, their end will be what their actions deserve. Their end will be what their actions deserve. But before they get to their end, they would have destroyed many people. That is the danger. And that is why you have to, you have to shine your eyes. Because if you don't do that, what is going to happen is you're going to really get to follow certain things that are not right. Please, for whatever you do, this book must not depart from you. This one. I said it must not depart from you. The word of the Lord must not depart from you. Yes, you can hear prophecies. You can, we can say everything to you. But do not allow this book to this, depart from you. If this fellowship, if this church will grow, it has to grow based on this. Not based on stories I will tell you and you say that, oh, he, say, he tells nice stories. I'm not here to tell you stories. Paul says that when I came, I did not come with eloquence. Hallelujah. It is not how nice I can speak. Amen. Amen. So somebody else is preaching and maybe I don't know how to speak and he speaks nice and you think, no, 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 no. It's not about that. Be careful. We are building a church. Amen. And we have to build it in a way that it will be strong and solid. Hallelujah. If we don't do that, what is going to happen is that we're going to struggle. Maybe we've made errors in the past. But today, we have to open our eyes. So that we don't repeat those errors. Hallelujah. Every Christian, every Christian has to really be careful and pay attention to the word of God. Don't follow everything you hear. It's dangerous. Check with the word of God. Because today people are even coming up with new things, saying all kinds of things. I don't even know where they got it from. Amen. I said I don't know where they got it from. But they're saying all kinds of things. All kinds of things. And we have to be careful. Because the enemy is really all around us. Bible says that he is doing what? Prowling around like. Be careful. Oh, because they are around. If you are not careful, they will manipulate you. They will get you. They will use you. And they will destroy you. Let, let, let's consider this. You have to answer me. I'm going to ask you a question. And if you know the answer, lift up your hands 
and then <laughs> and you tell me are you ready all right okay what about if we if you <laughs> you meet a pastor or you meet a prophet or an apostle and by some reason listen to me carefully by some reason i said by some reason i don't know the reason but he's married unfortunately they can't have children hallelujah abraham it took a long time before he could have a child it happened to his son isaac as well amen it happened to hannah amen so that is why i'm saying by some reason because i don't know the reason Zachariah and Elizabeth, they had the same problem. So if a pastor is not giving birth to a child, it doesn't mean what you think. Don't think for him. But if the pastor now decides and comes to you, you're a nice girl, and he says that, you see, me, I know that I'm a man. But people think that because my wife is not giving birth, I'm not a man. So you see, you are a nice young girl. So maybe it's my wife's problem. They won't even say maybe. They'll say, it's my wife. But because me, I'm a pastor, they, they say, okay, so you know what? You let me sleep with you so that you get pregnant and people know that me, I can. It's not my fault. Me, I can give birth to children. Hallelujah. Okay. What will you think? Yes, uh huh. Juan and also. Who's going to answer? John, you want to answer? Me? No. <laughs> so he's not right. He's not even a prayer. <laughs> Hallelujah. But we didn't hear what John said. Okay, give him a mic. John, okay, now. Um, what do you think about this person? This, is he a pastor? No, he's, he's masquerading as a pastor, to use that verse. Okay, so he's masquerading. I said he's not even... He's not a mango. He's not a pear. He's a poison tree. <laughs> he's neither a mango nor a pear, but a poisonous fruit. Amen. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Anyone else who has a, I mean, a different, but listen to me carefully. They exist. And people are still following them, going to them. And they are still prophesying. <laughs> do that on Thursday. <laughs> it would be nice to do that on Thursday when people can question you. <laughs> Hallelujah. No, but what I'm trying to say this morning is that we ought to be careful. Because if you tell me that, David, if you tell me that, I have to make sure that people are careful about you. Like, like John was saying, if it's a poisonous fruit, you will die if you eat. Because if it's a poisonous fruit, how much poison is he putting in us? And they are around. And they are still preaching. But are you here this morning to destroy people? No. The Bible is saying it. If I don't warn you, I'm a bad pastor. If I don't tell you, I will, you see, I will be worse than that person. If I don't warn you, I will be bad. 
I will be worse than that person. And that's why I'm warning you. I'm not running anybody down. But if that person, if that is what he is, that he doesn't need me to run him down. He has to go into his... Ah. You see, that is why God, when, when it got to, he opened the ground. Because you don't have to have such poison amongst you. So he opened the ground and they were buried alive. People like this are dangerous for the church. But they have masqueraded as people of righteousness. And because they can tell you stories, everybody is following. Hallelujah. Prophecy is good. But look at the prophet and his prophecy. Amen. I said prophecy is what? Good. But don't let anything prophesy to you. Don't allow anything to prophesy to you. Because if you are just... I don't know what to say. If you are undressing all women and you come and stand there and prophesy to me and you say that, oh, but it can happen to anyone. Hey! There are certain things that cannot happen to anyone. If they can... Ah, please, let's be careful. Because we have watered everything down to such an extent that everything is acceptable in church today. That is why a, a gay can become a pastor. What is he teaching? What will he preach to the congregation? Let's be frank. Let's be frank. Because... It is the word of God. What does the Bible say? What does the Bible say? We have watered it down to the extent that fellowship is no longer fellowship. It's something else. It's something else. So everything goes. Everybody sits in church. Look, your, your worship leader and uh, and uh, and... Uh, and and the uh, soprano, eh? Your worship leader and the soprano leader are fornicating openly. Hallelujah! Every day they are taking. Hey, look and and look. Please let me tell you something. Let us be careful. Let us be careful. They sit in check. They do all kinds of things. We see, we know. We don't talk. Let's go to the second danger. This is the number one, false prophets and teachers. Number two. <laughs> locally bred insurgents. They are bred in the same church. <laughs> is it big English? Oh, please, this is local. Local is local. Bread is breeding. <laughs> they create insurrection in the church. They create confusion in the church. They break churches apart. But they were bred in the church. Because the church began to raise them. And they became disobedient. They became, um, 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 they, they became everything. Except what God wanted them to be. Hallelujah. Acts chapter 20, 28 to 31. Keep watch over yourselves and all the flock of which the Holy Spirit has made you overseers. Be shepherds of the church of God, which he bought with his own blood. I know that after I leave, savage wolves will come in among you and will not spare the flock. Even, mm, 30 is nice. Even from your own number, men will rise, arise and distort the truth in order to draw away disciples after them. What does he say? Be 
Remember that for three years, I never stopped warning each of you night and day with tears. And today when you, I'm talking like this, you are criticizing me, judging me. Paul said three years, he said the same thing. Me, it's only today. And you are already judging me. Don't judge me. Let me warn you. Be on your guard. You will find them. They come into church. They sit in church with you. They are dangerous. They started with you. In fact, the day you accepted Christ, they accepted Christ. The same day. Now they say they are somebody's. They begin to manipulate you because they can see a little bit. Hallelujah. They have forgotten. The Bible says that we see in part and we prophesy in part. Be careful. Me, I'm doing what Paul did. He did it for three years. Me, I'm doing it for maybe one year. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> so be on your guard. No, go to 30 again. 30 is nice. Even from these ones, they are not coming from outside. Homebred, created in the house, raised in the house. What's he saying? <laughs> you know, <laughs> and you know, you are so used to them. They, you are so used to them. So when they begin their insurrection, you think it's normal. You blame the pastor. Pastor Crocheno, this is one of us. One of us. He's killing you. I said he's doing what? Paul, you see, Paul is saying it. Oh. If Paul is saying it, you see it in church today. From your own number, men will arise and distort the truth. Look. Also for Cassie. Then, look, 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 look. Then they will go and give another sermon. They will take the pastor's sermon. They will take the pastor's sermon and go and make notes. And then look at it. And then they will come to you and preach another sermon to you. Hallelujah. Be careful. If they preach another sermon to you and you don't understand, come to me. I said, do what? The problem with the church is that we, the pastors, we have made ourselves so invincible. We are not visible to the people. So they can't approach us. Amen. That's number one. Number two is that sometimes it's not the pastor that has made himself invisible. But people have really built a, a, a kind of barrier around him and he doesn't even know. He doesn't even know. Maybe somebody will say, oh, I want to go and see uh, daddy today. Then say, no, no, and daddy only crying. No, 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 and daddy, 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 Absalom will go and stand by the roadside. If you are coming with your problem, then he meets you. Oh, David, you know he's my father. And Absalom is so nice. These people, they are sometimes nice. Too. So when you see him, you want to talk to him. Then Absalom, David is sitting there. Absalom, oh, David is too busy. You see, even David, you see, he's old. He can't give good judgment. Let me, let me sort you out. They will give you some five cities, ten cities, and buy you. Hallelujah. Oh, Germany. They will buy you. That's what Absalom did. And try to really destroy his own father. His own father who has even protected him. When they had wanted... You see, Nippa is dangerous, so. So we need to be careful. Paul is saying that 
if these people are around. Hmm. From your old number, people will do what? In order to, they have an agenda. Listen. Listen. Do you know the most dangerous part? They don't leave the church. Those that leave are not dangerous. I said those that leave, they are not dangerous. Those that are dangerous, the most dangerous ones are the ones who stay. But form a church in the church. They are the most dangerous ones. When they see new people, can't say, can say, evangelize new people. Oh! You're best sure comes this year. So for this one, come. And they will be. No, it's, it's dangerous. And Bible says that these people will be around. So we have to be careful. And Paul is saying that, go to 31. He says that, do what? Be on your guard. Be on your guard. Don't go and hire a security man. He will sleep. Or no problem. He doesn't know your problem. So you, he will sleep. Be your own God. Let God give you the grace to search through this yourself. If you do that, it's going to be very difficult for anyone to really trick you. Hallelujah. Hmm. Okay, let me move on. I don't have too much time. First Timothy 4, 1 to 3. The, the Spirit clearly says that in later times, some will abandon the faith and follow deceiving spirits and things taught by demons. No, go to verse 1 again. Who are they? Are they people from somewhere? Homebred. And they will get to a time they will abandon the faith and follow deceiving spirits and things taught by demons. Go to the next verse. Such teachings come from hypocritical liars whose consciences have been seared as with a hot iron. They forbid people to marry and order them to abstain from certain foods which God created to be received with thanksgiving by those who believe and who know the truth. Listen, they are not going anywhere. That's why I said that sometimes they are within. They don't go, but they begin to manipulate people and begin to tell people stuff. You see, the pastor said this. No, it's not like that. It is like this. It is like this. It is like this. And unfortunately, it's easy for them, it's easy for people to follow. Because these people themselves, they have not availed themselves to really, they don't read. They don't, they, when, 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 when the pastor speaks, they don't really follow. They want easy ways. Jesus said that, my sheep, if another, if a consenting voice comes, they will detect. But you see, that's why I said you have to be on your guard. Because if you allow yourself to be taught and you allow the Holy Spirit to lead you, the moment they begin, because they, you see, they are, their stuff are always filled with lies. And that's why they are called hypocritical lies. The only way you can really detect is when you have the truth. Look, let me, let, let's get this, this right. Um, okay. You come from where? Where do you come from? 
Crouchy. Okay, super. Sit down. Now sit down. If I come and tell you that she comes, she's a girl. Amen. How would you know that she's not a girl? Unless you know the truth. If you don't know, you believe what I told you. And if you take it, you'll be doing harm to yourself. These liars will continue to tell their lies. The only way you can know that they are lying is when you know the truth. And the truth can only be found in the Bible. So Bible says that ye shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. Nobody will manipulate you. Nobody will scheme against you. Nobody, because you know the truth. So everything that you are doing, please, have time to read your Bible. I will say it again. I said, anything you are doing, you, I know you are busy. You are busy chasing money, chasing everything. Keep chasing. But in your chasing, don't forget the Bible. Because if you do, you will be tricked. You will be lied to. Because there are people around trying to get your attention. Paul said that they are nobodies, but they want to be somebodies. So you have to be careful. And Paul, not only that, but in, in 2 Timothy chapter 3, 5 to 7, because I, I just want to really go a little bit quicker. And then 2 Timothy 3, 5 to 7. Having a form of godliness by denying its power. Have nothing to do with such people. They are the kind who went their way into homes. They, I said they are homebred. They sit in church. And then everything, they, you see, they don't have anything to do. They will go to people's homes. What if you are no mother? And Bible says that they gain control over gullible women. Sometimes they invite you. Oh, umba, oh, uh, oh yeah. And the, the, the day you go, they say, oh, they will start from Kojok room. By the time you realize, they are already in Takradi. <laughs> Hallelujah. And please, women, and men. <laughs> if people are inviting you to their house, and I'm not saying because it's <laughs> Bible says that be hospitable. So they tell you that oh we are being hospitable. Be careful. I said be what? Don't go to people's houses like that, especially the opposite sex. Do not. There is so much happening in the church. And it is not only... the. <laughs> it, <laughs> please, it is not only about people that are going to read, use doctrine to really deceive you. People are going to use all kinds of things. They sit with you in church. They know a little bit about you. They know that you've been, you've been, you've been praying for uh, a, a husband. Into any time, yeah, number one, every day, so they know. Uh -huh. Then they begin to scheme, they begin to plan, they get closer to you, they come to your house. The first time they come with maybe, they won't come with a flower because that will give them out easily. No, 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 they will come with something else. They will come. I mean, Sometimes they don't even have jobs. Hallelujah. They, sometimes they are not working. But they will come. And they will let you, oh. And you see, because you are, you, you call yourself lonely. Even though you are not. Because Jesus is always with you. Hallelujah. I said you are not lonely. Single woman. You are not lonely, oh. Don't let anybody think that you are lonely and take advantage of you. You are not. It is your mindset. Hallelujah. Anytime you feel lonely, call the Holy Spirit. Hey, Holy Spirit, I come in. 
The Holy Spirit will come. The Holy Spirit doesn't only appear in church. He's with you. So just let Holy Spirit know that, look, this is what is going on in my mind. I feel lonely. He will show himself up and you will know that you have a companion. But there are tricksters in church, people like that in church. And they will, they see, they, oh, then they will start really, sometimes they don't even, <laughs> they don't start by coming home. They start by calling. They know that people who really are vulnerable and show themselves as vulnerable. And you, that's what you do. They know that at 12 midnight, they don't pray. They are counting silly. And then, by some design, MTN has also made a... Uh, uh-huh. <laughs> so, it is... They have to change the name. Make it something else. So, they'll call you. Listen to me. It doesn't cost them one CD. That's how cheap they have taken you to be. If they, are, if they are who they think they are, they will call you at 12 midnight. They will call you in the afternoon and spend money on you. Even, uh, even uh, uh, credit to call you, they want to call you at 12 midnight. Because that's how cheap you are. They take you. You see, they don't put any value on you. So it is only midnight they will call you. That one is free. Hallelujah. If you are, look, if they start to call you midnight, tell them that midnight is for sleeping or praying. It's not for your foolishness. If you have anything to tell me, tell me in church when you see me. When they see you in church, some people they say, oh, you see, you see, the way pastor is, me, I don't want to talk to you in church. Oh. Then also, also look at your foolishness. You agree to that. You agree to that. Huh? Repent. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Yeah, if pastor sees, you see, uh, pastor, this pastor, everything he will say. Every, you see, this pastor, he even watches our social media platforms. So he's always looking at your status and back when you can't say. Stories and everything. No, 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 no. Let's, you see, me, I'll call you at 12. That one, the, the weather is so cool. He's a liar. He's a lie. Hallelujah. They will lie to you. They, they, you see, when they begin to really begin to look at you like that, they don't have any good thing in mind. By the time you realize, and because you two, you are, you are enjoying it, you don't want to tell, even your best friend in church doesn't know. But he's calling your best friend at 1 a.m. Because it's up to 5 a.m. He's a, he, he, you see, in the afternoon, he doesn't go to work, so he sleeps. You are his work. <laughs> you are, in the afternoon, he sleeps. So you are buying his shoe. Your best friend is paying his rent. And he's sitting in the church. I said they are in church. Be careful. You see the nice suit that he wears and comes to stand here. And then you say, hey, he wears designer shoe. And then he's standing here and then singing. And then really dancing. And then, you see, I said he doesn't work. In the afternoon, that is what he does. He go on YouTube. And then watch how the steps are. Or no quiet dancing competition one day. So that when he comes to church on Sunday, he's dancing and you hey, he knows how to dance. So it's the same thing your, your best friend is seeing. In fact, the worst part is that not only is he going after your best friend, but he's after your best enemy as well. Your worst, you know, your worst enemy, he knows everything, no, because he talks to you. You see, this girl doesn't like me. Oh, sir. Then he finds a way to get there. And then he begins to let that girl know why he doesn't like. And then he comes to tell you something else. He begins to create all kinds. They are witches in church. 
I'm t- look, be open your eyes. Paul says that they are in church. Hallelujah. I'm not saying it to Paul said it. I'm just trying to tell you because Paul was not living in our day. He doesn't know what they do today. So I'm telling you what they do today. In Paul's time, they had a different strategy. Now you people, you are too technical. That strategy won't work. <laughs> so at Paul's time, there was no anajoy day or whatever. So now there, is, there are gadgets. There are things to use. Hallelujah. Paul's time, there was no worship leader who was standing in the front and no, 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 there was not, there was a, uh, David had all that, no, but there was no, like, people coming to stand here with all, every Sunday they want to wear a new suit. Please, your friend bought the last one. The next one is your turn. You will buy. You will never wear the ring. By the time you realize, they import. I said, by the time you realize, all of you. <laughs> Look, <laughs> we are trying to build ourselves together. But we have to be careful Satan doesn't sow seeds of confusion and discord amongst us. Because all these will create problems. By the time you see. Now you become so angry and bitter in church. And you think all Christian men are like that. So you decide to go to the world. They make you worse than when they met you. I said they make you worse than when they met you. But they are in church. But why is God allowing them to be be in church? Ask Peter first. If Peter gives you an answer, I'll give you one. Because they were there all that time. Paul knows about them. Peter knows about them. Even Jesus knows about them. Hallelujah. If they didn't give you answer, me, I don't. But the Bible says that Jesus said they will be in church. Uh, but why is God keeping them in church? Satan planted them. But I thought the Lord is protecting the church. How does he allow Satan to come? That one, I don't know. Hallelujah. But they are in church. Jesus said that. Who planted He planted, the son of God planted. But then Satan came and planted weeds among them. So there are weeds here. Unfortunately, because we ourselves sometimes we can't discern, they become worship leaders. And you see, God help us. Let me move on. I have so much to say. But I, I can't say it all. Maybe I have to cut it here because I don't want to run too much. Uh, no, I will continue next week. We will go to point number three next week. A year, two now, yeah. If you can manage these two, manage them this week. Next week, I'll give you more. Hallelujah. I may be taking too long with this, but if we get this foundation right, this church will not be confused. The enemy cannot manipulate us. We will be on our guard. Hallelujah. Because it is important. Look, a lot of people have been destroyed like that. A lot of people have left church. Not because the church was bad. But there were bad seeds in the church. And they couldn't discern. And those seeds began to corrupt them. Hallelujah. Like I said, by the time you realize you are so bitter, you don't even want to marry a Christian again. You say the people in the world. Who, who, who caused it? The person that Satan planted really deceived you. Please, I said, if anybody tells you I want to marry you, come and tell me. I know them better than you do. I know them better than you do. You see, we have come to a point we don't trust our pastors. Hallelujah. If we begin to, because they know everyone. They know. But it, you see, and oh, but you see, if the people are 5,000, you don't know. That is why in a church that has 5,000 people, they break the church down into smaller groups. So everyone, and that's, we will grow. We will not be like this. 
but we are putting things in place today. That is why you have somebody doing devotion with you. It's a small group. Hallelujah. So he has probably 20 people. So for the 20 people, he speaks to them on a daily basis. He knows them. If you are a devotion leader, you have to know your people and know their houses where they live. You have to. You can't sit down and pretend as if I can't go to everybody's house. That's why I, I, you are there. So you have to know their houses, know where they are, know what work they do, know what they are doing. They will say you are intrusive. Be intrusive. It is better to be intrusive than to leave them to live like life anyhow. They will corrupt others. When you know them, you know how to deal with them. You know what they need. You know the prayer they need. You begin to pray with, with them. Hallelujah. Don't take it for granted. So if you are not doing devotion, you think it's nothing, you don't even have an idea. It's your lifesaver. Because the word of God is powerful and effective. Sharper than every double, any double-edged sword. You, you, look, I said, read your Bible. When we were kids, they said, uh, 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 do what? Read your Bible, pray every day, pray every day. Yes, if you want to grow, read your Bible, pray every day. You come to church on Sunday, if we don't put it on the, on the screen, you don't read your Bible. This is your Bible. This big one, can you put it in your pocket? Can you carry this home? Can you carry this in the trot row? Everybody will say that you are crazy. Find your own Bible. Hallelujah. The best is to have something like this. This one is not big. It's portable. People, when you are holding this, people will judge you, but don't worry, let them judge you. And Jesus, are, Jesus will approve of you. Have something like this. There's even a pocket Bible. But if your eyes are like my eyes, you need this one. Hallelujah. But if you have uh, uh, spare eyes like I have, then you can read a pocket Bible. Amen. So I want you to understand, beloved, I'm not done with this. But I, I, you see, God knows what is good for us. God knows what is good for us. God knows you and God knows me. And he knows what is good for us. That is why he's giving us what he's giving to us. If we can follow and if we can build ourselves, we'll be a very powerful strong church where every individual in the church will be set apart for God. Hallelujah.